free golden eagles for War Thunder. Download the app in the description below. Hey guys, welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to the first part of the P47D Thunderbolt gameplay. Why part 1? Well, over the last 3 days I've played this plane in several matches. I tried to up-tier myself, down-tier myself, I tried different shell types, I tried different types of flying, and I picked out 2 games that were extraordinary, that were good, and that prove that when this plane is flown right, it is an unstoppable beast. The first part, the one you're watching right now, and the footage behind you is an amazing match. Spoiler alert, I get 6 kills. Now, this match was entirely based on how the aircraft should be flown, altitude, advantage in mind. When I did the P-38J video, uh, I was talking about how important altitude advantage is and proved that. Uh, recently Mags did a video with the Kai-44 showing how altitude advantage is important for uh, newcomers, and I'll be linking both of those videos in the description below. Now, here's a couple of things you have to keep in mind. The P-47 is an aircraft that needs, and I stress this out, needs to be above the enemy if you want anything to work. Now, yes, it's the jug. It will take shells after shells, but when you're fighting yaks, well, let's just say that the 45mm that the Yak-9T has isn't going to be quite friendly to your left wing. So, you're going to have to use a couple of tactics to get to altitude. Number one, side climb. If you think that the P-47 Thunderbolt is going to do its own job by climbing at 20 degrees, going straight to the enemy, it's not going to work. You need to side climb. My best suggestion would be go between 10, 12 and a half degrees and just keep going. Until you reach about 4,000 meters, don't even bother looking for the enemies. And another tip I'll give you is play around with mech. Manual engine controls. I've got a tutorial on that. I'll be putting that in the description below as well. Um, for me, I put the mixture to about 70, uh, maybe a little bit higher if the engine starts overcooking. I'm weaponing at all the time because by using mixture, you can actually uh, cool the engine as you're weaponing. So you'll be neutralizing the effect of overheating. And you always want to close the radiators because the plane here, I think they're open at about 40% and that will be creating some excess drag. The good thing is, there is no prop pitch and no supercharger, so you don't have to worry about them. The plane, with manual controls, is insanely easy to fly. Uh, but when you do dive below about 2,000 meters, I would recommend uh, turning the mixture back up a little bit. Uh, but around about 70% should be just fine along the entire way. So, 4,000 meters, and we're now starting to turn into the enemies. Now, at this point, things were not looking too good for our team. Again, what happened was a lot of people climbed straight into the combat zone. I know, it, it, it seems tempting. The first plane, and as a matter of fact, right now in this match, we had two Yak-90s that were killing the light tanks, and we did come quite close to losing the match. Two Yak-90s killing ground targets. Somebody has to engage them, but that doesn't mean that they should be engaged by the entire team. And right there, looking at the leaderboard, five minutes in, we're already down about half of our team. So I already know we're up for a challenge. But keep in mind that the matchmaker in which we've been placed is very, very nice for us. We've been down tiered, heavily. And this is a match that I would expect to happen very rarely. It happens quite often, and it shouldn't. The P-47, D-28, and the D-25's battle rating, way too low. And the battle ratings of American aircraft keep getting lower by the patch. Why? Well, because people don't fly them right. So, Gaijin, as a company who has to create balance in the matchmaker, is actually forced by the community to lower the battle, the battle ratings, to lower the matchmaker, to make it easier for people who don't fly their planes right, so that the matchmaker can function. Now, I know, I know that climbing for seven minutes and a half is annoying to then find the entire team dead. It's a lot easier to just go rushing in, head on a couple of players, kill two bombers, and then get out of the match it actually gives you more RP. And I'm aware of this. There should be a system that would award people for actually trying to fly their planes right. Even if it just means getting up there and maintaining altitude. But at the same time, there should also be punishments for people who fly to, you know, to space, like we saw in the A7M1 video that I made uh, a couple of days ago, where the P-47 flew to space, nobody could find it, and he did nothing. He was just trolling us. 
So there needs to be a system implemented. How? I do not know. I've been playing this game for three years and still I've, I can't come up with a system that would be able to award people for just climbing and maintaining. I think one of the easiest ways to do it would perhaps be to introduce a battle time. A better activity time where people who stay in the game longer and stay within near vicinity of the enemy aircraft would receive more points. But again, that could be a system that would be able to be abused. If two people on enemy teams would just be flying and circling around each other, they could then produce uh, points. So the system has to be produced so that it recognizes when a player is doing more than what would normally be expected from him. For me, I always stress this out. Every player has one player to kill, at least one player to kill. I don't care if you go head on, die in the head on, but as long as you take that player down, I'm, I'm kind of happy. Because with the current way community has been working with War Thunder, teams have been deteriorating. Every single time I jump into a game, I don't see teamwork. It's nowhere to be found. Why? There's no rewards for teamwork. I mean, yes, squadrons or squads in, in ways I've been applied in here now. I've got two, two teammates right here playing with me. Of course, they will help me out. But a random teammate who's just here for the RP and the Lions, they have no benefit in helping me out. The award for shooting down a player that is on a friendly 6 is minimal. Actually, it's not even there. And so there's greed. People want RP, people want lions, and they want them fast. I can't blame them. So, at this point in the match, we've reached the point of no return. Really, there's nothing else that we can do right now. I've tried to push, we've pushed the enemy players as low as we possibly could, now it's time to work down. And this is the thing, altitude advantage fighting is always like a pyramid. You want to get on top of it and then you just start working your way down. It's like demolishing a hill. So here's something I shouldn't have done. I pushed head on passes both of the Act 3 and the LA-5. But keep in mind how I do it. I quite fire quick burst from about a kilometer away and immediately move out of their fire path. This neglects any ability of them actually shooting me, although if they were using stealth and I was aware of that, I wouldn't have done that. When you see players using tracers, and if you know that you're firing from long enough, and a kilometer usually is sufficient, uh, you should be good. At this point, the cavalry has arrived, my teammates have flown in, and now it should be cleanup job. This is the fun of altitude maintaining. In the next, well, 50 seconds, I'm about to bag up half of the enemy team. Literally. Just watch this. This is enjoyable. This is the most enjoyable part of flying with an altitude advantage. You see, suddenly there's nothing to worry about. We're coming down, everybody's below us, we're coming in at 800 kph diving, 850 cals blazing, there's nothing these guys can do at this point. So coming out of the dive, no problem, I don't even have to worry anymore. Put the plane to retain about 700 meters or whatnot, turn the plane straight around, and uh, the first thing I spot is the Yak-90 in front of me. He's been shot by some of my teammates, but uh, he's in a perfect stall, you know what, might as well take the kill. That's the uh, fourth kill. And straight in front of me is the last Yak-90 remaining in the area. This was one of those players that was engaging ground targets. It was a uh, lovely idea, but they didn't do it fast enough. So trying to put some shots in, had a hard time, but then they converge. And at 300 meters, when you have 850 cals coming into one spot, there's nothing that will survive that. And uh, that's it with the enemy team. The only player remaining is now probably somewhere in the enemy runway, so uh, let's make our way there. So, two minutes of flying later, and me and my teammate have reached the enemy runway, and there he is. The Yak-9, parked right in the runway. And here's where I give an ultimate. I told him that he can either bail, or he can face freedom, because, you know, people don't like strafing on the runway, and as much as I do hate it as well, I knew one thing. If this guy able, was able to take off, I mean, he could potentially just fly around their base and wait for the AAA to kill us all, so I'm not taking the chances. Especially not when you're flying around a AAA field that is this biased. Yes. <laughs> the AAA needs to be nerfed, honestly. Because not just me, but also my teammate that was flying along with me got shot down by the AAA. Hey, but I'm not complaining. Six kills, a couple of extra AAAs, and uh, a GG for the American team. And here we go. First place, six kills, a lovely amount of uh, RP and uh, nearly a hundred thousand lions. And just to give you a feel, this match was enjoyable to play. I wasn't stressing out. It wasn't difficult for me. The plane responded. And that's the joy of the P-47. 
of pretty much any aircraft. If you fly it right, if you fly the way that plane should be flown, you're not going to have problems with it. Yeah, you could be facing an extremely good opponent, and yes, your teams could be extremely bad, and in that case, you're going to have to carry. That's where the, the, the actual flights are going to get extremely, extremely complicated and uh, quite tense. But in general, if you have a couple of squad mates, if you fly the aircraft like the way it should be flown, if you don't commit to head-on passes, if you pick the easy targets and go one by one, work your way down, it is the most enjoyable flight you'll ever have. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the P47. If you want to check out uh, the uh, mech video, the tutorial I made for the manual engine controls, you can find that in the description below, alongside the uh, P38 video that I made, and the Kai 44 video from Mags. But until next time, take care, and uh, safe flying to get me to attack him. And the idea is very simple. The first one dives, I dive after him, and then the second P-47 dives after me and finishes me off. I noticed this in the last second and I decided to just simply do a zoom climb after the second P-47. He didn't expect it and by the time that he saw what was happening, it was too late. I managed to get a quick burst into his uh, left wing and uh, he's got a big hole in there. So uh, I let my team know that he's missing the left wing. He can still fly, okay? He could potentially still make it back to base.